most images are mid, average, run of the mill. And I know that might sound kind of rough, but by definition, that's what average is. You know, most people are average. Most of the images out there are, by definition, average. I'm no exception. I know that I occasionally produce excellent photography, but of the couple of thousand portfolio images that I have, there is a bank of millions of images that are just average or below average even. That is the price that you have to pay to produce some work that is above average, great or excellent. And that is the case for everyone. But of those people who get to the point of producing really great work, how do they get there? And what makes them different? You know, how do photographers stand out in an extremely saturated market? Now, what paths and what skills do these excellent photographers focus on? In making this video, I reflected on the decades of being a creative and meeting thousands and thousands of photographers. And I've come up with three common traits that I've recognized in all of the amazing photographers that I've come across. Now, these traits aren't mutually exclusive and there are certainly more attributes than just these three things alone that make a successful photographer, of course. But these are some of my personal opinions on some traits that I think top performing photographers have. And if you develop these things too, you may very well find yourself ahead of many other photographers as well. Now, these three things are, number one, they treat the subject with respect. Number two, they have a refined voice. And number three, they've developed some business acumen. But before we dive into that, this video doesn't have a sponsor, but it is supported by the thousands of you wonderful people who get value out of my courses, prints, presets, and eBooks over at patk.com. So thank you so, so much for the continued support. And it is because of you that I can continue to do free videos like this one. Okay, the way I've structured the rest of the video is that these points kind of build on top of one another. And if you're looking to develop these skills, then doing them in this order is a pretty good idea. The first one is that high level photographers treat their subjects with respect. Now I'm not really talking about physically, like treating your models with respect when you communicate with them, although that is plenty important as well. What I mean is that high level photographers always have a very strong subject in their images. They're always very, very good at subject isolation or accentuating the subject in their images. I recently did a photography breakdown reel on my Instagram about my favorite historic photographer, Fan Ho, and he was a master at isolating his subjects through the use of high contrast, framing, positioning, and other photographic techniques and visual language. Whenever you look at his work, you know what you're looking at. There's no ambiguity at all. And high level photographers do this very well. They establish a subject as the highest point of interest, the top level of visual hierarchy in an image. As a beginner photographer, many people struggle with the idea of how to tell stories in photography or about the idea of how images tell stories just in general. And it all starts with the subject. The subject is the story. From there, additional techniques like element placement, environment, eye movement, and more move the story forward depending on what's going on in the composition and the intent of the photographer. This is how important having a strong, visually interesting and visually striking subject is. Your image is only ever going to be as strong as your subject and understanding the visual language of seeing interesting subjects in the world and using visual patterns to accentuate them is what is going to make your images stand out from the rest. Subject, subject, subject. It all starts from there. Okay, now we get a little bit more intermediate advanced level of photography here. Now, when you think of photographers or artists having a voice, what does that mean? It means that they have something to say and that their work is good at saying it. It means that their works are able to visually communicate to you. You know, the visual arts like painting, drawing, illustration, and photography are all about visual communication after all. I found that when I look at an image from a really, really good photographer, I can see intent. I can see direction. I can see what they were trying to capture and the reason why they decided to capture it in that way. I can see what they were trying to say. These photographers have spent a significant amount of time thinking about and speaking in their own style. And in my opinion, style and voice go hand in hand. 
You know, if you've spent any decent amount of time on the channel, you'll have heard me say before that style isn't just what you decide your Lightroom edit is going to be like, right? It's not just the visual treatment of your edit. Style goes way further than that, right? Style is made up of the subjects you like to shoot, the quality of light or the times of day that you like to shoot in. It's made out of the common layouts and compositions that you fall back on. It's the things that you've been known to do over and over and over again, traits and characteristics that form the basis of your body of work. This is why photographers who have a true style can only ever achieve this after many, many years of shooting. And you can't just copy someone's visual aesthetic or editing and think that you have their style down because that's not enough. That's just the surface. And it is this unique combination of how someone decides on and puts together all of the elements in the composition, all of these micro decisions, that is the true essence of style. And that's kind of the secret. You know, the best photographers have intention with their images and they build on that intention with every single image they take. Every shoot moves them closer to refining that style and the meaning and the voice they're trying to communicate with. And if you're a beginner wanting to get to that level, slow down and be intentional with your work. For some, sometimes that requires breaking away from the act of photography altogether and thinking about what photography means to you instead, you know, what you get out of it and where you want to go with it, where you want to take it. For others, that means deliberately practicing some component of visual language over and over and over again so that you know how to use it and how to spot it in your mind's eye when you're in the field. Okay, if you're enjoying this video, then please do me a favor and boop that like button down below so that I know that it's good enough to make even more free videos just like this one. The last point here goes hand in hand with the previous point, but I understand that it's not the case for every photographer out there, but hear me out. It's very common to see the best photographers out there not only kill it with their craft, but also kill it with their businesses too. What I mean by that is that these people have taken their love of photography full time in some way. That means they're able to gain some kind of income doing photography and they're able to support themselves doing it. But more to the point, they're able to do it full time, which means that they have more time to do it than everyone else. You know, hardly any of them do it part-time while also working day jobs, and there's a reason for that. You know, the more time you spend doing photography, the better you're gonna get. It's as simple as that. And someone who has all of the hours of the day to shoot is going to spend two, three, four, five times more than someone who does it as a hobby or only does it after work or on the weekends. And in order to spend this much time practicing the craft of photography, you need something to be able to support you doing it. And it's not uncommon to see the top level photographers out there putting their skills to work to get them some kind of money that supports them doing what they love. You know, sometimes they get patrons or donations to support their work. Sometimes they build businesses around the thing they're good at. Sometimes they're so good at freelance or client gigs that they get a consistent stream of income. There are so many different ways to approach it, but the base idea is that they have just so much more time than everyone else to practice the craft of photography. So of course they're going to be really good at it. It just makes sense. This is the 10,000 hour rule in action. Now, again, this isn't always the case all of the time. And I know there's going to be that argumentative troll in the comments who is going to disagree with me. But, you know, I assure you, I've met, I've seen, and I've spoken to so many thousands of photographers in my lifetime that I know that this is most certainly the case for my truth and my experience. Alrighty, let's wrap this up. How can you put all of this together to get ahead of 99% of other photographers out there? Well, first it starts with craft wise. You know, start to get a relentless focus on your subjects and learn how to pick and isolate strong ones. From there, niche down and develop a style that is unique to you and use visual patterns to help you visually communicate better. And then try to create even more time for yourself to do photography by creating an income by doing it. The more income you can create on the side, the more time you'll have available to keep practicing and that will speed up the entire process tremendously. 
Now, if you have any tips for your fellow photographers on how to get ahead in photography, then leave them down in the comments below and we can all help each other out. And if you wanna keep this video train going, check out this video to learn even more skills about photography. All right, I'll see you in the next video, but until then get out there and make something that matters. Peace.